To create a connection to a flat file, you first have to make sure that at least one of your agents has access to the location where your flat files are stored. In this case, I only have one active agent that needs to access the file, so the file can be on the local machine where the agent is running. Here you can see the file that we'll be connecting to. If I wanted to be able to use other agents to access this file, I'd have to move the file to a shared network location. Usually when a file is on a network location, you'll need to make sure that your agents are running as a valid network user. To set this up, you must go to your services console and find the query surge agent service. Here, you right click on the service and choose properties. In the properties dialog, you must navigate to the logon tab to change the user account that the agent is running under. To find your user, click the browse button and type in the domain and username that you want and press check names. This will now show the user if it is found. After setting the user, you will also have to enter the password for this user's account. Finally, after these settings have been set, you will need to restart the agent service. Now, your agent should be able to see the file and you can continue on with setting up the connection within Query Search. To create a new connection, first go to the Administration section and then choose Add. This will bring up the Add Connection Wizard. First, you'll create a connection name and this will be how you identify your connection within Query Search. Then you'll choose your data source, which in this case is a flat file. We are going to be connecting to a CSV file, so we'll choose Delimited File. Now you must enter the path to the directory containing your flat files. This must be visible to the agent or agents that will be running queries against these files. You must also select the file extension, which in this case is .csv, and the delimiter used in your file, and in this case it's a comma. You can choose from the list of delimiters, or if you choose other, you can enter your own delimiter. Finally, you must specify whether your headers are in the file, or whether they need to be generated, or if you want to provide your own header line. Since we're choosing headers in the file, we'll need to enter the number of columns that we have. We'll also need to enter the data types for each of these columns. If you don't enter any value for the column types, all of the columns will default to strings. The column types field takes in a comma-separated list of your data types. These should be ordered in the same order as the columns appear in your file. Once done, we can click Next to continue. On the final screen, we'll just be presented with a summary of the choices that we've selected. When you're done, click the Save button to create your connection. As you can see, the new connection is added to your connections list. So now let's go into the design area and develop a simple query pair to test our connection. First, you need to select your connection from the available drop-down. For the example purposes, we'll use the same connection for the source and target. Now you'll be able to write a SQL query to query your flat file. This SQL follows the standard ANSI SQL syntax that you'd find in most databases. The important thing to note is that you'll be using the file name without the extension in place of the table name in your query. So let's save these queries and do a run. If your file is reading from a local file, you may need to select a specific agent to run against. If we take a look at the results here, we'll see that the data comes back in the same way that it would from any other data source. So that completes the tutorial for creating a connection to a flat file.